British soldier is killed fighting on front line in Ukraine, family of ex-servicemen who left army in March say he was shot dead on battlefield in Severodonetsk. Jordan Gatley, who left the British army in March, was reportedly killed on Friday. His father Dean Gatley, from Cheshire, said the former soldier traveled to Ukraine after Vladimir Putin ordered his soldiers into Ukraine of February 24. Dean posted an emotional tribute on Facebook hailing Jordan a hero. Jordan becomes the second British fighter to have been killed in Ukraine after volunteer 36-year-old Scott Sibley was killed fighting Russian troops. A former British soldier was killed on Friday fighting to defend Ukraine from the ongoing Russian invasion. His family has said Jordan Gatley, who left the British Army in March, was reportedly killed in the eastern city of Severodonetsk where the fiercest fighting of the war so far is taking place. His father Dean Gatley, from Cheshire, said the hero former soldier traveled to Ukraine after Vladimir Putin ordered his soldiers into Ukraine of February 24. In an emotional tribute confirming the news, Dean wrote on Facebook. I didn't think that I'd ever use social media in this way but Sally, Adam and I would like to share some family news with all our friends, but there are just too many people. Yesterday, October 6, 2022, we received the devastating news that our son, Jordan, has been shot and killed in the city of Severodonetsk, Ukraine, he wrote while posting pictures of Jordan as a child and in his military unit explaining the circumstances. Dean continued, Jordan left the British Army in March this year to continue his career as a soldier in other areas. The war against Europe had begun so, after careful consideration, he went to the Ukraine to help. We have had several messages from his team out there telling us of his wealth of knowledge, his skills as a soldier and his love of his job. His team say they all loved him, as did we and he made a massive difference to many people's lives, not only soldiering, but also by training the Ukrainian forces, he said. Dean wrote that his son and his unit in Ukraine were so proud of what they were doing in the embattled country, and that the missions they were undertaking were dangerous, but necessary. He loved his job and we are so proud of him. He truly was a hero and will forever be in our hearts, he said. In a statement to Mail Online, the Foreign Office said it was supporting the family of a British man who has died in Ukraine. Jordan Gatley becomes the second British fighter to have been killed in Ukraine after 36-year-old volunteer soldier Scott Sibley was killed fighting Russian troops in April. The father was a veteran of the British Armed Forces who served in the Commando Logistic Support Squadron in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, UK nationals Aid Lynn and Sean Pinner were sentenced to death on Thursday in the Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, breakaway region of Ukraine in what has since been described as a sham judgment by Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. Britain says Aslin and Pinner were regular soldiers and should be exempt under the Geneva Conventions from prosecution for participation in hostilities. Thought the pro-Russian separatists who control Donetsk say they committed grave crimes fighting as mercenaries and have a month to appeal. Thought after a fierce criticism from the UK military. Ms. Truss was forced to backtrack after initially giving her blessing for Britons to go and fight in Ukraine. Severodonetsk has become epicenter of the battle for control over the industrialized Donbas region in the east, made up of Luhansk and Donetsk provinces. Parts of the city have been pulverized in some of the bloodiest fighting since Moscow began its invasion on February 24. The tragic news came as Ukraine's general staff said Russia was conducting unsuccessful assaults on the city, where about 800 civilians have taken refuge in the azochemical plant's bunkers, according to the tycoon whose company owns the Fugate said Saturday that the Azo plant had been shelled intensely for hours and the city had been ruined by Russian forces. This is their tactics, people are not needed, the infrastructure is not needed. Houses are not needed, everything should be simply ruined, he said. The number of civilian victims would be enormous and terrible, he added. Gade said Ukrainian fighters in Severodonetsk were winning street battles, but that Russian artillery would then destroy the buildings those fighters were using for cover, story by story. In Donetsk, 
two civilian deaths and 11 injuries were reported across the region on Saturday, its governor said. According to the area's military administration, all major cities in the free territory of Donetsk have been without electricity since Saturday. In the south, a man died in Odessa after coming into contact with an explosive object while swimming at a beach with his wife and son. The regional Ukrainian commands visiting beaches there is currently banned due to the risks of mines. For residents in nearby Mykolaiv, every day brings a brush with death. Igor Karpitov, 31, recalled how his neighborhood was hit last week, shaking his apartment, and how he helped a bleeding man to an ambulance. Then I went to another place which had been hit, where emergency services were already taking care of someone, he told AFP. But they were dead. And the one I had helped died in an ambulance, Mikhailov Regional Governor Vitaly Kim stressed the urgent need for international military assistance. Russia's army is more powerful, they have a lot of artillery and ammo. And we are out of ammo, he said Saturday. On Sunday, the Southern Command said the Ukrainian Air Force had destroyed ammunition depots and equipment in three airstrikes in the last 24 hours, without naming their location.